Let's say we're looking at a two-dimensional curve like this one here. One question we might ask graphically is if we're looking at a particular point here and we say that as time increases, we're going along the curve in this direction. At this point, which way is the curve turning? Well, in the two-dimensional case, it's fairly simple to see in this situation that the curve is going to be turning downward like that. But what happens if we're looking at a three-dimensional case? Remember, in two dimensions, the curve can only really turn either down or up. But in three dimensions, if something is moving through space like this, there's an infinite number of directions that that curve could turn in. So we want a formula that allows us to determine what direction is the curve turning. To figure that out, we're going to take a look at the unit tangent, normal, and binormal vectors. So to start out, we need to take a look at the unit tangent vector. Now, remember that if we have a vector function r of t being, for example, x of t and y of t, if we want to take the derivative of this vector function, we call that r prime of t. And without worrying about the components of that vector, one piece of information that we know about it is it corresponds to a tangent vector to the curve. To see what that looks like, let's take a look at this 2D curve we have here. If we're looking at this point and say this function is r of t, at this point r prime of t is going to be pointing off of the curve like this, in the direction that the curve is moving. So it's going to sort of look like a tangent line, but it's just going to be a vector pointed in the direction of that line. If we wanted to find a tangent vector that had a length of exactly one, say we call that t of t as a vector, that would be our normal tangent vector. Well, this has a particular magnitude, and if we wanted to make that magnitude one, we can just divide by that vector's original magnitude. So this is the formula for the unit tangent vector with respect to t of our original curve. Now is the interesting part. We want to go from a tangent vector to a normal vector. And in order to do that, we're going to need one step in the middle, which is, let's say we have a vector function r of t, which has a constant magnitude. The magnitude of r of t is equal to c for any value of t. If the magnitude is constant, one piece of information that we know is that r prime of t is always going to be orthogonal to r of t for any particular value of t. Let's see why that's true starting geometrically. If we take a look at, for example, a 2D graph starting from the origin, if the magnitude of our vector is a constant, one way we can think about that is a circle. Because remember, a circle is the geometric shape that has a constant distance everywhere from the center. So any point on this circle has to be where our vector function ends up. Now we can think about what the derivative of this vector function might look like. First of all, what would happen if the derivative were pointing off of the curve like that? Well, this derivative we can think about as having two components. One component being pointing straight off the circle, and one component orthogonal to the circle. If we have a component pointing off the circle, that's going to end up making the vector longer, so its magnitude is going to change. It won't be constant. And if our velocity were to point inward toward the center, then the magnitude would get smaller, our vector would get shorter. So anytime we have a parallel component, our vector's magnitude is going to change. So if we want to have a constant magnitude, our velocity is going to have to be orthogonal to the original position vector. Another way we can prove this is algebraically. Take a look at this. If we do r dotted width itself, we know that's equal to the magnitude of r squared, which is going to be another constant because the original magnitude is constant as well. Now let's think about this. If r dotted width itself is equal to a constant, what if we differentiate with respect to t on both sides? Well, we know the derivative of c some constant is just going to be zero. But on the other hand, 
You can check the video in the description for a derivation of this, but we can use the product rule for derivatives on this dot product as well. So if we differentiate this, we're going to get r prime dotted with r plus r dotted with r prime. So we differentiate the first and then we differentiate the second. The dot product is commutative, so we can switch these two around. And that means we're ending up with two times r prime dotted with r. That's equal to zero. Well, we can just cancel out the two because we just have a zero on the other side. If r prime dotted with r is zero, if that dot product is zero, we know that that must mean r prime is orthogonal to r. So that's another algebraic proof that this fact is true whenever the magnitude of our function is constant. Now, we have to think about why exactly this is important. Remember, the tangent vector, this unit tangent vector, is always going to have a magnitude of 1. In other words, its magnitude is a constant. So if we think about the derivative of the tangent vector with respect to t, that's going to be orthogonal to the original tangent vector. It's going to be normal, just like this, normal to the direction that the curve is going. And because we're looking at the derivative with respect to t of how the tangent line is changing, in this case with this curve, the tangent line is going to be curving downward. And that's exactly the direction that we want our normal vector to point in. So if we define this new vector as the normal vector, which we know is orthogonal to the original, as the derivative of the tangent vector with respect to t, and then we divide by the magnitude of that to make it a unit vector, this result is going to tell us not only a vector that's orthogonal to the curve, but a vector specifically that points in the direction of where our curve is turning over time. Now the last type of vector we're going to look at is nice and simple. It's called the binormal vector, b of t. And it's a fairly simple one because we know we have two vectors already that are orthogonal to each other. And we know that if we take one vector, for example, t of t, and we cross it with another vector, n of t, we're going to get another vector that's normal to both of them. So that's what we define as the binormal vector of the curve. And these three vectors together give us all the information that we need.